Hi, I'm John, a solutions architect at Amplitude. In this video, I'll be covering the plugin implementation of Session Replay. Then I'll talk about configuration, validation, privacy management, and how other Amplitude APIs work with Session Replay. If you want to learn more about Session Replay as a whole, check out our Help Center for some general tips on what you can unlock and how you can use replayable sessions in Amplitude. Now let's get started with Session Replay. We can find what we need in the Dev Center. Note that there are two options of implementing Session Replay. You can implement via the plugin if you're using a browser SDK, and there's a standalone SDK option if you're using a third-party partner or a server-side implementation. For the purposes of this video, we'll mostly focus on the browser SDK plugin, but we'll also cover the standalone SDK briefly towards the end of the video. Now let's talk requirements. The plugin requires that your application is web-based and that you can provide a device ID to the SDK. Another requirement listed further down is that you need to have default session event tracking enabled. Finally, the API key that you use for session replay must match with the same API key that you use for your analytics project. Keep that in mind if you're testing with a dev project. We can get started with installing the plugin with either Yarn or NPM. Once that's installed, you can import the plugin and then initialize analytics. Let me demonstrate this on my app. Here's my application. I've already installed the plugin using NPM. At the top, I'm importing it into my code. Down below, I've initialized analytics and I'm tracking the start and end session events. This is what I refer to as method one. There's also method two, where you can disable all default tracking and the plugin will start enabling start and end session events only. Note that you cannot have multiple instances of the browser SDK running on your website or have the browser SDK initialize again somewhere else in the app. Initializing again can cause mismatches in device ID or session ID, which can break your replayable sessions. Now we can start with the plugin. A required and important parameter to set at this step is the sample rate. Sample rate determines what percentage of sessions are captured for replayable sessions. For instance, a sample rate of 0.5 means 50% of sessions will be captured. Note that a sample rate is set on a per project level. If you're unsure what to set for sample rate, you can start with the sample rate of 1 in a local test app using a test amplitude project, like I'm doing now. This way we can verify that we're seeing the captured session in our test analytics instance and that the plugin is working as expected. When moving to production, you can also start with a lower sample rate, such as 0.1, so that you don't blow through all of your quota too early and that you can get a sense of what to expect. You can also try calculating your sample rate so that you don't exceed your quota. Note that your quota is set at the org level and Amplitude will stop capturing sessions for replay if you blow past your quota. A simple calculation for estimating your sample rate is to divide your quota by your total monthly sessions across all projects where you plan to instrument session replay. For instance, if my quota is 2 million session replays per month, and I want to instrument on a single project that averages 3 million user sessions per month, a reasonable sample rate would be 66% or 0.66. Quotas reset on the first of every month. To keep an eye on your quota, you can navigate to the plans and billing page in your org settings. Now we can add the plugin to our Amplitude instance. From this point on, the plugin is active and we should be capturing sessions for replay, but we're not done yet. Now let's get started with our app. Our app is live and should be capturing session replays now. But let's talk about validation first. One of the quickest ways to validate if you're capturing session replays are to visit the homepage and scroll down to here, where you can see how many replays you've captured. You can also go directly to Users and Sessions to the Session Replays tab, and here you can see all the session replays you've captured in this project. You can also view the ingestion monitor here. 
these charts will let me know if I'm running into any throttling errors, if I'm exceeding my quota, or if I'm sending any invalid session IDs. This chart here lets me know if I've set successful requests. Another way to validate if you're capturing session replays is to visit your app and check out the Amplitude Event Explorer Chrome extension. Here I can see all the event activity on pages where the browser SDK is active. Events marked with a session replay ID will be captured for replayable sessions. Note that not all events in a session are required to have this property to be replayable. When a user navigates away from the tab that is active for session replay capture, the events that they trigger elsewhere can result in events without the session replay ID property. As long as one or a few events in the session contain the session replay ID, their session should be captured and replayable. Sessions should be replayable in Amplitude once the user has ended their session, such as closing the window that they were active on. We can view a past session that I recorded for replay. Here are some of the events that I triggered. Note that the logo, spinning logo, is a black box, and I'll explain why that is later. Another way to validate if your sessions are being captured are to create a user session struct. Here we can filter for any event, then filter by session replay ID. is not known. Lastly, remember that what is captured is dependent on what is in the browser's DOM, and therefore some ele elements like Canvas, WebGL, and cross-origin iframes cannot be captured. Other elements not captured can also be found in our developer docs. Let's talk about privacy management for a second, and I'll explain why we saw a spinning black box for this logo earlier. For privacy reasons, Amplitude masks all text input by default. What content is masked is completely in your control using CSS selectors. So you can, for example, mask usernames or unmask search terms. You can mask elements by adding the class amp mask. Here's an example. This text element will appear censored in the replay. This is how you can unmask an element with amp unmask. To block a non-text element, you can use the class amp block. This is what uh, presented the logo as a spinning black box earlier. For more restrictive measures, you can also opt the user out of analytics tracking entirely or disable replay collection. To opt the user out of your analytics instance, simply include opt out to true in your analytics initialization method. On the topic of config options, you can also set server zone to EU if you're using Amplitude's EU data center. You can also disable replay collection, which can be useful if a user navigates to an area of your app that should not be recorded. Here's how you can do that. When you're ready to restart replay collection, simply re-add the plugin and that'll start capturing sessions again. Let's talk about data retention and deletion. Session Replay uses existing Amplitude tools and APIs to handle privacy and deletion requests. If your plan includes Session Replay, Amplitude retains raw replay data for 30 days from the date of ingestion. If you purchase extra session volume, Amplitude retains raw replay data for 90 days from the date of ingestion. If you need a stricter policy, contact Amplitude support to set the value to 30 days. Note that changes to the retention period impact replays ingested after the change. Sessions captured and ingested before retention period change will retain the previous retention period. Replays that are outside of the retention period aren't viewable in Amplitude. Replays are also not exportable through Amplitude. Amplitude also provides the DSAR API, which returns event history for a given user. <clears throat> the Amplitude DSAR API returns the session replay ID in those events but not the raw replay data. Session Replay also uses Amplitude's user privacy API to handle deletion requests. Successful deletion requests remove all session replays for the specified user. 
Also, <clears throat> when you delete the amplitude project on which you use session replay, amplitude will delete that replay data. Session replay also uses the same block filters available in the amplitude dashboard. Session replay will not block traffic based on event or user properties. Note that session replay does not set cookies on the user's browser. Instead, it relies on a browser storage option called indexdb. This option allows continuous replay collection during a session in which the user navigates browser tabs or closes and reopens the tab. The SDK cleans up the data it stores in indexdb and should not impact the user's disk space. If a user opts out of all cookies on your site, you can use the opt-out configuration option to disable replay collection for that user. However, the main thing to note here is that Session Replay does not set any cookies. Feel free to check out the rest of this talk for more information on the plugin. Now let's talk a little bit more about the standalone SDK. The main difference between the standalone SDK and the plugin is that you don't need to send start and end session events. However, it still requires that your application is web-based you must track the sessions with a timestamp which you pass to the SDK. You need to inform the SDK whenever the session timestamp changes. You must also provide a device ID to the SDK. The session and ID and device ID that you pass to the standalone SDK must match those sent as event properties to Amplitude. In other words, if you're using a partner like Segment, you must make sure that the session ID and the device ID that you send to Amplitude matches what you're sending from Segment. Another feature of the standalone SDK is that you can explicitly opt the user out of session replay only, instead of completely opting them out of all analytics tracking. You can read through our developer docs to learn more on how to instrument the SDK with some of our most popular third-party partners, like Segment. Lastly, let's talk about troubleshooting. Some of the most common reasons why session replays don't appear in Amplitude are because of the content security policy not matching, blocked JavaScript on the website, or sampling. When you add the session replay script to your site, visit a page on which the session replay SDK is running, or the plugin, and open your browser's developer tools. Check for any error messages in the console that contain the text content security policy. To resolve this error, update your site's content security policy to allow connection to Amplitude's APIs. Another reason for session replay not capturing anything is that the user might have browser extensions or network security policy that may block the session replay plugin or SDK. Check your developer tools to see if requests fail, and if so, you can add an exception for the blocked domains. Another common reason is that the sampling rate isn't set correctly. You may need to set the rate higher or set the rate lower to avoid throttling and to make sure that you don't blow through your quota. Also, some sessions may not include the session replay ID property. Remember that you don't need all events in a session to have the session replay ID property. The reasons why the ID property may not be present in an event include if you've instrumented an event with a source different from the source you connect to session replay, or if events fire when the user isn't focused on the page. In general, replays should be available within minutes of ingestion. Delays or errors may be the result of one or more of the following. Mismatching API keys. Remember that the API key that you use for session replay must match the same API key that you use for analytics. The device IDs must also remain consistent between session replay and your analytics instance. Make sure that you're referencing the right project when you're capturing session replays. Keep that in mind, especially if you're testing with a dev project. If users bounce within a few seconds of initialization, the SDK may not have enough time to upload replay data or capture enough events for a re meaningful replayable session. If session replay isn't implemented on all the pages a user visits, their sessions may not capture properly. And remember that some replays will expire after 30 days. If you have the add-on, they will expire after 90 days. But those may be some reasons why the session replays won't appear. That wraps it up for this video. If you need more help, feel free to check out our Developer Center or reach out to your Amplitude contact. Thanks for watching.